May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, for it is you alone who is our strength and our salvation. Amen. The poet Pablo Neruda has these words to share with us. The peasant in the field ate his poor quota of bread. He was alone. It was late. He was surrounded by wheat, but he had no more bread. He ate it with grim teeth, looking at it with hard eyes. Eating alone is a disappointment, but not eating matters more. It is hollow and green, has thorns, like a chain of fish hooks trailing from the heart, clawing at your insides. Hunger feels like pincers, like the bite of crabs. It burns, burns and has no fire. Hunger is a coal fire. Let us sit down to eat with those who haven't eaten. Let us spread great tablecloths, put salt in all the lakes of the world, set up planetary bakeries, tables with strawberries in snow, and a plate like the moon itself from which we all can eat. For now I ask no more than the justice of eating. The justice of eating, the poet says. Eating, <coughs> sisters and brothers, is never a strictly physical act. It is always also <coughs> spiritual. The food that we eat contains within it memories. Memories of warm sun and sprinkling rain, of seeds quivering and sprouting and growing, roots stretching out through the dark soil, of innocent animals who never spoke a word, of the work of strangers, farmers and bakers whose hands and labors went into its preparation. All of these memories are present in the food that we eat. There is a reason that we pray before meals. There is a reason that Christ said, if you love me, feed my sheep. There is a reason that Jesus said, when you give food to hungry people, you are feeding me. There is a reason that time and again, when God wanted us to know that we are not alone, that we are loved and that God is with us, God has used miracles of food. When God's people had been enslaved in the land of Egypt and God sent them, God sent them Moses to bring them out of slavery and into the promised land. And as they wandered hungry and thirsty through the wilderness and the people began to wonder, they began to doubt if God was really with them, God sent them flocks of quail and springs of water and manna from heaven. And God's people knew that they were not alone. When those 5,000 people came to Jesus, each one of them with their own worries, their own questions, their own burdens, when they came to Jesus hungry, and Jesus filled them with five loaves and two fish, he fed them all. God's people knew that they were not alone. During the month of September, our church's Feed My Sheep campaign hopes to collect 1,000 pounds of food to go to the storehouse to feed the hungry people of Custer, South Dakota. I hope that we exceed that goal. We will feed hungry people because Jesus told us to do it. If you love me, then feed my sheep. We will offer food to the hungry because Jesus did it first. Jesus gathered 5,000 people on a hillside that day, and he fed them all with just five loaves and two fish. Those hungry people, they were filled. And as they sat there on that hillside with their bellies full of miracles, they knew that they were not alone. 
that they were loved and that God was with them. This story of Jesus feeding the 5,000 with only five loaves and two fish, this is the only miracle story to be recorded in all four of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But here's the thing, sisters and brothers, here's the thing. The food which they ate, that food which fed them for that day but left them hungry again tomorrow, that is only part of the story. The food is only part of the story. The rest of the story is Jesus Christ himself. The rest of the story is that when God looked at our world, God saw a world at war with itself. God saw a world in which some children die quickly of starvation while other children die slowly of obesity. God saw a world in which dictators can become rich men by withholding aid money that had been given to feed their starving people. God saw a world in which God only knows how many people walk through life every single day believing that they are unloved and believing that they are alone. And God saw this world and said, enough. I will go to them. I will take on human form and I will go to them as one of them. And I will break myself open for all that is broken in their world. And I will fill them with me. The true bread, the bread from heaven, it is about more than food for the body. It is about food for the body, yes, it is. But it is also about food for the soul. It satisfies our hunger and our thirst forever. That is the real story here. This is a story about more than consumption. This is a story about communion. In the Custer Community Church, we celebrate open communion. We believe that the communion table is not our table. It is Christ's table. And all are welcome here. You don't have to be a member of this church to receive communion. You don't have to be a member of any church to receive communion. All you have to do to eat at Christ's table is be hungry and trust God to do the rest. And I am so glad, I am so glad that I am the pastor of a church that celebrates that kind of hospitality. Our open communion is a good thing. But as I thought about this story this week of Jesus feeding those 5,000 hungry people, I realized that our open communion is good, but it is not good enough. Because time and again, when God's people were hungry for love, hungry to know that they were not alone, God did not wait for the people to come to God. God went to the people. And so after church today, from 11 to 1 p.m., Paul Mettingrad and I are going to be setting up a table outside where we will be able to collect donations for our food drive to feed the physical hunger in this community. But we will also have a table set up to offer Holy Communion to anyone who wants to partake. Anyone whose soul hungers and thirsts for that which truly satisfies. We are going to go outside of our church to meet them. We are going to do that because that is what Jesus did. And if you want to come and help us and join us at that table, you are welcome. I don't expect that we're going to be 5,000 people, Paul. <laughs> no. I mean, I put a little thing in the paper, but realistically, we will be lucky if one or two people stop. But still, that would be one or two. That would be one or two people who know that grace is free and that God is here and love is in the world. One or two people that will know that they are not alone. And that Jesus had to start somewhere. What happened on the hillside in Galilee that day, it was about filling hungry people's bellies with food but it was also about filling hungry people's souls with the very presence of God. That 
is the work that we are about here in the Custer Community Church. So we will continue to collect food and send it to the storehouse to feed hungry people. We will continue to do it until everyone has enough to eat every single day. But that alone is not enough. Because if all we do is feed people's bodies, then we will have consumption without communion. We will have mission without ministry. We will make consumers instead of disciples. So we will also do what Jesus did. We will offer the bread of heaven, which rains down free and breaks for all that is broken. We will feast here on Jesus' good bread, and then we will take it outside of the church, and we will offer it to anyone who hungers, and if we run out of bread, then we will offer them ourselves. We will tell them that they have a purpose, holy and high. We will tell them that grace is free, and that God who stretched the spangled heavens, the very creator of time and space, is in love with them. And we will tell them that they are not alone. And we will go and go and go until no one hungers, until the whole world is filled with God. Sisters and brothers, when the Israelites were lost and starving in the desert, God sent Moses to fill them with manna from heaven. When the 5,000 people were lost and hungry, God sent them God's own heart to fill them up with five loaves and two fish and a world of love and grace. And when the people of Custer, South Dakota were lost and hungry, and God wanted them to know that they were not alone, that they were loved and that God was with them, God sent us. If you love me, then feed my sheep.